Mr. Enclosure, is this the site for your rocket launching program? And, and could you tell me where your rocket is? Yes, this is the rocket launching site, and my rocket is just here. And what is the name of your organization? Uh, the name of my organization is uh, National Academy of Science, Space Research and Ast Astronomical Research. And what position do you hold in the organization? I'm the Director General of Science, Space Research and Philosophy. In 1964, five years before Apollo 11 made the United States the first country to land a man on the moon, there was a Zambian science teacher who believed his country would get there first. This man had found the inspiration for this on his first airplane flight. While on this flight, the pilot refused to comply with his odd request to stop the plane so that he could get out and walk on the clouds. After this encounter, the Zambian science teacher made up his mind to enter the space race. And what better way to do this than to send his team of astronauts first to Mars and then to the moon a year later. This eccentric Zambian science teacher was named Edward Makukan Koloso. So here's the odd but somewhat inspiring story of Edward Makukan Koloso, the man who had the big dream of having Zambia dominate the space race. The man known to history as Edward Makukan Koloso was born in 1919 in the northern part of what was at the time called Northern Rhodesia, now Zambia. When he was a young man, Edward Nkoloso met Kenneth Kaunda, the future president of Zambia, and like Kaunda, he had received a missionary education where he learned theology, Latin, science, and French. Edward Nkoloso wanted to join the priesthood, but was drafted into the Northern Rhodesian Regiment Forces in the Second World War to fight on the side of the British. The British were victorious in this endeavor, but those who contributed, like Nkoloso, were still under colonial oppression in their home countries. After the war, Edward Nkoloso became a translator for the colonial government. He also had a job as a science teacher, and at around the same time, he became motivated to dismantle the colonial administration, and that's why he joined politics. Records from Zambia's National Archive detail how Edward Nkoloso fought against raising the native tax, advocated for a maternity clinic and colleges, and also argued for a multiracial society in Zambia. In 1957, Edward Nkoloso even organized large-scale protests against both the British colonial administration and the native authorities that were given a certain degree of power by the British. Nkoloso was also imprisoned and tortured multiple times as he was fighting the British colonial government. Edward Nkoloso also opened a new school, but this was shut down by the British authorities. So thereafter, he drifted between secondary schools around the country teaching Latin, science and mathematics. Now that we know his early beginnings, let's get to the juicy part of the story. Edward Nkoloso wasn't content with just being a science teacher, and so this is why in 1960 he founded the Zambia National Academy of Science, Space Research and Philosophy. Please note that this was not an official organization. The powers that be did not officially approve of it. Mr. Inglow, has President Kaunda given permission for your project, and has the Zambian government approved of it? Uh, not as yet, but uh, they, are, they have taken interest in seeing what I'm doing because this is a novelty, some things new in this, need this country. Perhaps Edward Nkoloso was determined to prove Zambia's power and importance on the world stage. And what better place to show that than the space race? What do you think the reaction of America and Russia will be to Zambia's joining in the space race? Well, oh, they'll be only surprised because they find, they will find that you, we are just, uh, they will underestimate our our resources plus the intelligence, but I'm sure we are catching them. So, in an attempt to achieve his mission to go to Mars and the Moon, Edward Nkoloso recruited 12 astronauts and put them through a rigorous training program which he designed. To train the team of astronauts, Nkoloso set up a makeshift facility on an abandoned farm 11 kilometers from Lusaka, the capital of Zambia. Part of the training regimen involved the trainees being rolled down a raffle in a 200-litre oil drum. 
According to Nkoloso, this would train the astronauts, or astronauts rather, in the feeling of weightlessness in both space travel and at the point of re-entry. He also told them to walk on their hands as he believed this to be the way to walk in space. And for sure, this team really had some interesting training methods. Edward and Coloso made them swing on a rope before cutting it while they were mid-air to allow them to experience free fall. So these were some notable trainees who were part of the team. Godfrey Nwango, who was at the time just 21 years old, had been tasked with the moon landing, while Martha Nwamba, a 17-year-old girl, was headed for Mars. And the following is what Edward Nkoloso envisioned especially for the trip to Mars, and I quote, We have been studying the planet through telescopes at our headquarters, and we are now certain that Mars is populated by primitive natives. Our rocket crew is ready. Specially trained space girl Martha Nwamba, two cats that are also specially trained, and a Christian missionary, will be launched in our first rocket. But I have warned the missionary that he must not force Christianity on the people on Mars if they do not want it. The team wore some interesting attire. Edward Nkoloso wore a standard issue combat helmet, a khaki military uniform, and a flowing cape. His team of astronauts sometimes wore green satin jackets with yellow trousers. The rocket that was to launch the team to Mars was named Dikalu-1 and it was a 3 meter by 2 meter drum shaved vessel. This vessel was named after the first Zambian president, Kenneth Kaunda, and Koloso claimed that it was space worthy. The planned launch date for the rocket was to be on the 24th of October 1964, which was Zambia's Independence Day. And this launch would take place from the Independence Stadium. Unfortunately, Edward Makuka Nkoloso was denied permission due to the government viewing his whole plan and setup as being inappropriate. So let us quickly take a look at how people viewed Edward Nkoloso's dream. A lot of people did not know whether to take this project seriously or not. Others wondered if it was a semi-serious space program or a useful publicity stunt. The interviews that Edward Nkoloso gave did lead to, to clarify whether his space program was serious, silly, or pure satire. An abandoned farmhouse not far from Lusaka, we have a youthful group of budding astronauts playing at entering Zambia for the world's space race. However, to most Zambians, these people are just a bunch of crackpots, and from what I have seen today, I am inclined to agree. Many years later, in 2016, when former Zambian President Kenneth Kaunda was interviewed about the space program, he said the following, and I quote, It wasn't a real thing. It was more for fun than anything else. In all of this, Edward Nkoloso told reporters that even though people thought that he was crazy, he would have the last laugh the day he was going to plant Zambia's flag on the moon. As you have probably gathered by now, Edward Nkoloso's program failed dismally. And he blamed various factors for this failure, with one of them being problems he encountered with his crew of astronauts. In an interview he gave in 1965, this is what Nkoloso had to say. My spacemen thought they were film stars. They demanded payment. Two of my best men went on a drinking spree a month ago and haven't been seen ever since. Another one of my astronauts has joined a local tribal song and dance group. Martha Nwamba, the teenager who was supposed to go to Mars, got pregnant and her parents took her out of the program. Another reason why this program failed was because it suffered from a lack of funds, for which Nkoloso blamed the imperialist neo-colonialists who were scared of Zambia's space knowledge. In fundraising attempts, Edward Nkoloso reportedly wrote to numerous countries and organizations asking for money from Israel and the United States as well as the Soviet Union and UNESCO. The donations that he asked for ranged from about $20 million to $2 billion. Unfortunately, Edward Nkoloso was unable to secure the multi-million dollar grants that he was looking for and so his dream of an African nation winning the space race was never realized. A few years later, Edward Nkoloso unsuccessfully ran for mayor of Lusaka, Zambia. In this run for office, his manifesto emphasized scientific advancement. 
Later, he was appointed by President Kenneth Kaunda to the Liberation Center, a movement for regional freedom. Edward Nkoloso also championed the government to support witch doctors. He claimed that the witch doctors were supposed to have a place beside the physicians and that they were an antidote for Christianity, which had hurt Africa's medical skills. Nkoloso retired from public life in 1972 and then he died on the 4th of March 1989. He was buried with presidential honors. Nearly 60 years later, the United States is the only country to have sent humans to the moon, but Africa has leaped into space. For example, the first satellites to be entirely developed in Africa were launched by South Africa's Cape Peninsula University of Technology in January of 2022. Although Edward Nkoloso and his team of astronauts seem to be something from a satirical story, you can't take away the fact that these were Africans who dared to dream big. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on Edward Nkoloso and his team of astronauts. Don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been Tatenda for African Biographics. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.